guys, welcome to my channel. This is an about me video. This is an introduction to me. These are questions that I've compiled as well as looking at some other YouTubers about me videos to kind of see what kind of questions people go through when they answer these. I've not made a video like this and I've been uploading videos here on this channel for about two years. So I decided it was about time to let you know who I am. I tried to be as detailed as possible, but it's also rambly and there's also like offshoots of different things. So I hope that you guys enjoy this. I'm glad that I finally did this video. This is my second time recording this video. I tried to film it yesterday, it didn't go very well. I'm terrified that this video is gonna be out of focus the whole time. I feel like I almost need my glasses. I don't wanna film this whole thing and then have it not be in focus. There we go. Am I blurry? I have no idea. I'm nervous. This video might be a dud. I feel like I should just refilm all of this. I think I should. I'm really tired. I'm just gonna refilm this and I'm gonna finish doing my makeup. It just didn't turn out very well, so I'm refilming it for you today. So hopefully it's better today. I do not want to film this a third time. I've never given you guys an introduction to who I am. I don't even know if you know what really my name is. You must, but anyways, I'm filming in my kitchen. You can see our mirrors, our dirty island, and then our old school fan. I tried filming this with a nicer background in our living room area, but it just it didn't work out yesterday. And I think part of that is that I'm so used to filming my makeup at the kitchen table. So I decided to just carry on and do that today for you guys. So I'm gonna do my makeup while I answer some questions. So let's get started. I'm actually gonna eat a banana real quick. I'll be right back. <laughs> So let's get started. Maybe I'll zoom you guys in a little bit. I'm still drinking coffee so we didn't. Which one eat after my banana? I think that's fine. I don't know why I get nervous when it's sit down videos where I have something planned that I'm trying to talk to you guys about. Normally I don't get nervous at all when I'm filming videos. It could also be my one and a half cups of coffee that I have cursing through my veins right now. I didn't know, but I'm trying to be normal and not weird. My legal first name is Melody, but my brother, he couldn't say Melody because it had too many syllables. Oh, if you hear clickety-clacking, that's Bruce. Who's my dog? I'll tell you about him in a minute. So the nickname that I got with my family is Molly. In my life, I either have people who call me by my legal name, like my coworkers, people I met in college because I never wanted to correct them and say that, oh, actually Melody's my legal name, but I actually go my Molly. So they all call me Melody. But then my family and friends that I've had for years and years and years, like since I was a kid, they all know me by Molly. It's one of those things where like I'm very particular about making sure that I am calling someone by their preferred name and making sure that I'm pronouncing it correctly. But I literally don't care if people call me Melody or Molly and I don't have a preference Early. Well, maybe I prefer Melody now that I'm an, an adult. I'm not gonna go back to like my family and friends that I've had for a long time and be like, actually, can you call me Melody now? But yeah, so my name is Melody or Molly. You can call me either. I don't, I don't care either way. That's why my channel name is M Vlogs because I could not decide on whether or not I wanted to use Melody or Molly. So I just went with M. Um, but I might have to change that in the future because I think that there are some other YouTube channels that have that name but we'll see when that happens. I am 28, I'm gonna be 29 in January. I live with my husband, Noah. We have been together for 12 years. We've been married for five. And then we have two pets. So we have Bruce, who is our golden retriever, and Domino, who is our fluffy black and white cat, who makes appearances in several videos. So you'll definitely know them or get to know them. I have a bachelor's of science in organismal biology. My work, I'm a data manager for oncology clinical trials. I always have to write it down because I get them mixed up. So my sun sign is a Capricorn, my moon and it's a Taurus, and my rising is a Cancer. I'm interested in zodiac and astrology, but I don't know a whole lot about it, but I think it is kind of interesting to learn about. I am 5'1", been this height probably since middle school. I reached 5'1 and then didn't grow after that. Born and raised in Portland, Oregon. I've never lived anywhere else. I prefer Oregon to all the other places that I've traveled to, which to be fair, I haven't traveled to a lot of other places, but the places that I have been to, I definitely do prefer uh, Portland out of those places. 
So I like YouTube, obviously. I watch YouTube more than I watch TVs or movies, but I also do like TV and movies. I like art, tattoos. I have a lot of tattoos. There's a tattoo tag, but I don't know if I want to do it. Um, let me know if that's something that you would want to see. Baking, cooking, I enjoy doing both of those things. I like exercising now. That's something that I started doing in December of 2019, and it's really become a, like a part of my lifestyle now, so I really do like exercise. I have other interests too, but I think those are my main ones. Basically, I started watching YouTube a lot in high school, and I was watching people like Grace Helbig, Mamrie Hart, Jenna Marbles. All of those people are what really started me in being very drawn to YouTube. Um, like I said, I watch YouTube more than I watch TV or movies. I've expanded all of the people that I follow a lot, so and I, I follow a range of different people now. I always thought that having a channel would be really fun and a good way of documenting your life. Um, I do find that editing takes me a really long time and I don't know if that's normal. I've heard some YouTubers talk about how long they take to edit a video. I think she has an editor now, but people like Emma Chamberlain, she used to spend a lot of time editing her videos. I think like 20 plus hours or something. That's kind of where I'm at. I don't know. I feel like that's not normal, but I do feel like I edit my videos really carefully and I have like a particular way that I like to edit my videos. So what I've been filming for the last two years has been heavy vlog content, also baking and cooking videos, like lifestyle videos too as well. I feel like I could be put in that category, but I do think that like this is a very normal channel as far as lifestyle of everyday peoples. This is not a channel to come to for a very glam or I don't know what the word is, a very like put together um, household because this is not the only thing that I do. I I work full-time as well so like lifestyle content but that's normal and I don't know if it's relatable to everybody but I feel that it's more relatable than a lot of the lifestyle people that I used to watch a lot are no longer relatable to me um just because their their lifestyle has become so extra in a lot of ways I also find myself as a 29 almost 29 year old woman watching these videos and being like what are these kids doing yeah I kind of went on a tangent there but my channel is about like everyday lifestyle content I want to get into more makeup videos because I think people usually really like when I do my makeup in videos if I either talk through it or if I speed through it people really like it so I think I want to do more of that I really enjoy other people's content that's very different than my life. People who are filming their careers, nurses, doctors, like teachers, that kind of stuff is really cool. Their lives are very, very different than mine, um, but I think it's really interesting to learn about, so I like to watch their stuff. I forgot that I was doing my makeup. So I just like seeing how other people live. I find makeup content to be super relaxing. And the content that I watch has evolved with YouTube. So there's facets of YouTube that I never knew were a thing. And now I really enjoy watching. Like this year I found ASMR and I realized, oh my gosh, this helps you so much with your anxiety. I didn't know that that was possible. I didn't know that you could watch a video to help you relax and fall asleep. Or if you're feeling anxious, it's something that you could do to take your mind off of your thought. Um, so I think that is fantastic. And you can learn anything off of YouTube as well. I changed a toilet this year. The power of YouTube being able to teach you how to do things that you used to think were impossible or used to think that you had have to hire somebody to do that for you, I think is so beneficial. Feels like a safe space. You can get to know people and their lives in a way that is a lot more personal, obviously a lot more personal, but just more interesting than watching TV. I feel like watching somebody's content evolve with them is more interesting than watching like several seasons of your favorite show. It's just different, but I think um, to me it's a lot more interesting. It's hard to say. I The one thing that is really on my mind is that Noah and I would really like to have kids. We've been trying to conceive for over a year and anyone who's lived through that knows that you get tunnel vision. So it's very hard to think about other goals. So right now that's my biggest thing is just wanting to have a family. It's hard to answer this question because there's short term stuff that I would really like. Like there's parts of our house. We live in a 60s house. I forgot to mention that earlier when I was like, we have no 
normal. We're normal people. Um, our house was built in the 60s, so there's definitely stuff that we want to do to update the house, but don't worry, also keep its 60s vibe. We're not gonna do a flip on this house that makes it into a completely different style. No offense if that's something that you enjoy doing. I just, I can't imagine taking this house in all of its 60s glory and then painting the walls gray, painting the fireplace, and then making it look completely different and making it farmhouse chic. That's just not me. Oh yeah, short-term goals. Noah and I really, really enjoy camping, which we should have taken advantage of that more during quarantine. We've talked about it. I would really like to get a camping rig um and by camping rig i just mean like a camping van in order to make it easier for us to go camping and we can just pick up and go with a camping rig but these are all like short-term things with what i want to do with my life i love my job but i don't see myself leaving my job anytime soon in order to leave my job there would have to be a drastic drastic shift in culture and have a manager that is not as good as the one that i have now i love my manager now she's incredible she's like such an inspirational person but not in a wow they're so inspirational she's just like so hardworking and so knowledgeable about everything that we do that I just respect her so much so if she were to leave I feel like that would be very difficult I just respect her a lot I see myself doing my job for a really long time I've already worked there what is considered a long time I've worked there four and a half years that is a very long time I know for other jobs that's not considered as long, but with where I work, that's considered being very, very senior. Oh, I'm still learning new things every day with my job. So there's always something new and interesting to learn about and always something that keeps you on your toes. So I really enjoy that about my work. It can be very challenging, but it's also, you're not doing the same exact thing every day. And there's always new things to work on or solve or collaborate on ghostly on here. So yeah, I just really enjoy where I work and I don't foresee myself leaving anytime soon. Um, so I'd like to continue on with my job for a long time, get better and better at that, grow with where I work, I think would be really cool. I feel like I've learned a lot the last year. I started therapy at the end of 2019 and I think I just wanna continue with that and continue to learn more about myself, why I do the things I do, where that comes from. I've also learned a lot of things through therapy that has benefited me in work and life. And I've been able to teach other people about it too and become a better friend, better family member, better wife because of it. Sorry, hold on guys. I want to continue to learn, learn to manage my anxiety better. I just want to continue to improve and do better. And I want to continue to build on that growth. Um, that would be really important to me. There's just a lot to say with that question. Like, what do you want to do with your life? Like, there's so many different ways to go down that like ways of answering that. But I just want to be better at everything that's important to me. I want to learn more about the things that are important to me. And yeah, that's what I want to do with my life. So I guess I'll start with what I'm worse at. I am really bad at public speaking. I have a very hard time with public speaking. I know that a lot of YouTubers have said this before, but it really is completely different than talking to camera here. I'm gonna zoom you guys in a little bit. Um, this becomes very, for the most part, very comfortable. That's very different than talking in front of a group of colleagues. For me, talking in front of a group of very smart, intellectual people, because that happens at work often where you're in a meeting with people who are doctors and nurses and PAs or NPs, people like that. They are so intelligent and so knowledgeable. Talking in front of people who are undeniably smarter than you or talking to a big group of people is very difficult for me. I get very nervous, get very anxious. Um, my voice will start cracking like I'm in puberty. I'll feel my heart pounding in my chest. Um, I'll start slipping up over my words and then it's like downhill after that. I get sweaty. <laughs> I'm a sweaty person anyways. Um, having to do something like that is very, very stressful for me. I've gotten better at it for sure. I am way more comfortable with speaking up in a meeting and I have no problem doing that with like my team and the people that I'm very comfortable with. Um, but it's learning how to do that with 
people that you don't know as well. Or for instance, at the last quarterly meeting with our whole institution, we were talking about our accomplishments of this year because 2020 has been so bad. It was kind of talking about the good things that happened. I just submitted as a joke, like my toilet thing because that is a huge accomplishment to me. And I submitted it as like funny ha ha. Our director was like, oh, that's a great idea. You should do that. And I was like, okay. To be fair, I think anybody who submitted anything, like anybody was allowed to present it. But uh, my toilet story was right after a bunch of these incredible like patient care stories and then I was talking about changing my toilet so it was funny it was just comedic relief but it was one of those things where it's like I think that was my very first time talking in front of our whole institution I think over a hundred people and then I was talking about my toilet oh, so that was fun for me but it was a good experience and I do want to grow with the institution and in order to do that you do have to be comfortable doing those types of things that's what I'm worst at what I'm best at is probably giving advice I feel like I'm a very good advice giver in a way that is respectful to the person because I feel like a lot of the people that I do give advice to they're so busy helping and nurturing other people that thinking about themselves is the last thing to do so when I give advice to them it's putting them putting their importance up top and everything else lower giving them advice in a way that really supports them make sure that they remember that them being respectful of themselves is like the highest priority i feel like i give really good advice and i give really practical advice too if the situation needs it there is a time this year where someone was coming to me for advice and they were in a position where they felt uncomfortable with the decisions they made because of how other people would perceive them and this person is a lot older than i am i feel like i brought that millennial perspective of like it. This is your life. This is a decision that you're doing because it's the best thing that you can do in your situation. Them. If they think negatively of you because of these decisions and every decision that the person had made was the correct good thing for them to do at the time. Them. This is so ridiculous, these expectations that we put on ourselves of what makes us successful versus what makes us a failure. This is all implanted from society and it's bullshit. They were really upset, really emotional about it. And I just went on a tangent like this for like a minute where I was like, you made the best f***ing decision that you could have at the time. You did the thing that was the best for you. You are doing just fine and there's nothing wrong with what you're doing. I went on like that for a minute. And then at the end of it, it was just like kind of silent. And then the person that was with them said, amen, sister. So it's just like that perspective of like coming from me, who's someone who grew up in like a different generation, you're doing the best that you can do at the time. And that's fucking all you can do. So that's like the kind of advice that I really like to give. And I've, I've done the same kind of like speeches with coworkers or friends before who are upset about the decisions that they've made or they're having difficulty with something. It's like you are doing the best that you can do and that's all you can do. I think giving advice is what I'm best at. When Noah and I got engaged and we're going to get married, his grandpa as well as his dad were both diagnosed with cancer. So his grandpa ended up passing away two weeks before we got married and then his dad passed away four weeks after we got married. And we had moved our wedding up. Our wedding was going to be a year later, um, but because the both of those family members were so sick, we moved the wedding up and I'm so glad that we did. That was an awful, awful time of our lives for sure. And then recently I had a miscarriage. So like I mentioned earlier, Noah and I have been trying to conceive for over a year. I did get pregnant in August and that was the first time I've ever had a positive pregnancy test. And then after that, I miscarried. I feel like videos that I've watched surrounding miscarriage have been um, very helpful in kind of processing those feelings. So I would like to make a video in the future about that so that I could help other women that are going through it. But I just don't don't feel like I have the like mental capacity to do that right now. But I will do it in the future at some point. But those were easily the two worst times in our life. Weird talking about but I think it's a good question I feel like when I learn about other people and what they've been through it humanizes them a lot more so that's why I included that question 
Noah and I went to Oahu last year and I got to, uh, we got a cage dive with sharks and I have a video about that trip. So that was incredible. That had been a huge, 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 huge goal of mine to want to do and being able to do that was amazing. That was a great experience and that was one of those like, this is incredible that I can do this moment. This is another question that I really like hearing from other people because it's very interesting different people's experiences and I also feel like parts of my upbringing have been really similar with the people that I get along the best with but that's why I like to know how people grew up because I feel like knowing those commonalities it really builds a bond with people if you know that you grew up in a similar way. I was raised by my mom who was a single mom and I have two older brothers I have one brother that's 11 years older and one brother that's a year and 10 days older. My brother who's 11 years older acted as a father figure for me for sure. My dad wasn't really in the picture growing up. He was while I was young, but not when I got older. I don't know if I want to go into it. Never mind. I don't think I missed out on anything by not having my biological dad in my life. So I'm very grateful. Having my older brother was definitely a saving grace. My mom raised us by herself with the help of my older brother. She was a cool career woman. She spent a lot of time working growing up. So we had my brother looked after us a lot. And then when he moved out, when he got old enough to, you know, it's time for him to start a life of his own. We had a lot of daycares. I don't have anything against daycares. Mine were just incredibly boring. Every daycare that we went to was so boring. Oh my nose is so tan. I ended up putting so much stuff on my nose. I should zoom you guys in a little bit. So anyone who's been raised by a single mom knows the difficulties that comes with that. Um, so I'm not gonna hammer on it too much. Let me talk about all my trauma. We grew up in Portland. We ended up moving over onto the southeast side in the fourth grade and then I lived on the southeast side of Portland for a really long time. Mom was really strict. I had to have two business days approval for going over to a friend's house. It's so interesting when you look back on things as an adult and you realize that your parent did something that you thought wasn't cool at the time but then you realize that like they had my best interests. So weird the stories that you remember but I vividly remember meeting a neighbor down the street from us for the first time and she was with her dad and they were like I think walking by our house or something. We ended up being friends for a while but her parents were weird. I think about it now her parents were incredibly weird and my mom always had the best bullshit detector out of anybody and she still does I think. I remember introducing themselves and then the daughter was like oh we have a hot tub and I may have been in the fourth or fifth grade it would have been pretty soon after we moved over to that side of town i was like that's so cool i was like mom can i go over and my mom just got like the weirdest vibes from the dad because the dad was also encouraging me coming over to go in the hot tub with his daughter and thinking about that now i'm like that is so and weird. My mom was like, no, you're not going over there. And I was like, oh my gosh, mom, come on. Like, I really want to go over there. And she's like, no, you're not going over there. Stop asking me. And now I'm like, she was worried that the dad was a weird predator. And then now after watching and listening to every podcast about true crime, I'm like, <laughs> It's so good that she did that. I think everybody looks back on parts of their childhood and wishes that some things had been different, but my mom was always really protective. It, it's just like, I don't even know. Sometimes I get emotional when I'm talking about my mom. I really appreciate her as a person. And one huge thing is, I think it was incredibly beneficial as a daughter to see my mom working hard and my mom hustling for us. And that was advice that I gave to working moms who felt really bad. It's like, you're giving your kids such a good example. So in my opinion, that's not something to ever feel guilty about. I'm trying to think if there's any anything else that's pertinent about how I was raised. Like there's things that I I'm thinking of but I don't know if I want to tell you. I'm sorry. Maybe I can do some story times or something to give more context to it but there's things that if I were to mention right now out of context would be like that's weird and it was weird. 
School was always really important to me. When I was little, I really wanted to be a vet. And then as I got older, I wanted to be, I switched from vet to teacher. And I had wanted to be a teacher for a while. I had a phase where I wanted to be a firefighter. It was a very short lived phase. In college, I did an internship with my old high school. I had two amazing science teachers, uh, Mr. Gilbert and Ms. Mr. Dosa, like two of the most influential people in my life. They are such amazing people. I get emotional when I think about them sometimes too. I went back and I was like a teacher's assistant in their classrooms. I think the time that I went and I did my internship was right around like either midterms or finals or something and I just saw the exhaustion and I just saw how difficult it was to be a teacher. I got a lot of advice from other female teachers that I would have to be a very very strict teacher in order to get respect from students and that was just not something that I wanted to do and I realized that I wanted a career that I loved and I was passionate about, but then also wouldn't be such a toll on my life. Because teachers, they have to be so passionate about what they do in order to be teachers. Teaching is not for the faint of heart. And I think a lot of people are realizing that in quarantine when they realize that they now have to be their kid's teacher and they didn't realize how difficult it was to do that. Oh, that whole time while I was in college, so end of high school and college, I was working either like 25 hours to full time, depending on which job and depending on what time period it was. I served tables for a long time, so it just depends on the slow versus the busy time of year. I talked a little bit about school and work earlier, but I paid for my education with loans. The way that the education system is set up in the US is so messed up that until you're 26, I believe this is how it used to work with financial aid you had to report your parents income even though you weren't living with them even though they weren't contributing to your school they still calculated what kind of funds you could get from from your parents money I had to claim my mom my entire time I was in school because by the time I was 26 I was already way out of school I went to community college for three years and then I went to uh, a university for two years two years and some change probably that whole time I used loans and I paid for my school on my own um, and I I never expected my mom to help me with college. I never had that mindset of like my mom would pay for my college. I always knew that I would pay it on my own. Out of my siblings, I was the only one to graduate high school and go to college, which is a huge accomplishment in our family. So that's really important to me. So I just wanted to bring that up. So it's just a list of favorites. So favorite animal, definitely favorite animal is a shark. Typically, I really like tiger shark. And the reason why is because they will eat anything. I read articles before that they found trash can, car part. There's even one that said like a suit of armor, which I'm just like, where did the shark get a suit of armor from? So they're my favorite. I could talk about sharks for so long. Fell in love with them as a kid watching Discovery Channel specifically shark week and that was when they just did factual Ugh, don't get me started but they just did factual stuff around sharks instead of fake they're putting out now which makes me very unhappy and sharks aren't man eaters let's get that out of our vocabulary that is something that the media has presented them as and it's bullshit we can go into that more at a later date but i really really that people have gotten that into their heads and I've had arguments about that before. I would have loved to do some sort of shark conservation. That would be incredible. That would still be my dream job. Honestly, that would be amazing. I forgot to mention that while I was in college, I did an internship with the animal behavior department of the Oregon Zoo and that was really cool. If you guys are interested in learning more about that, I'd be happy to do a video or something on that. That was just something I wanted to mention because it was really cool. Favorite food, I love hearty comfort foods those hands down are my favorite there's a really really good meat market and restaurant called laurelhurst market over in uh, the laurelhurst neighborhood in uh, southeast portland they have amazing steak they have amazing sides so good like i would recommend it to anybody anybody who eats meat steak potatoes and a side oh that's my favorite food favorite drink i love beer <laughs> and i think beer will always have my heart for a long time well, always have for a long time we drank PBR, but 
we have moved on to Rainier now. Favorite book is All Be Gone in the Dark by Michelle McNamara. It's around the hunt for the Golden State Killer, and that is the guy that they got with the 23andMe data back, was that two years ago now? Unfortunately, she's now passed. She passed during the writing of that book. Her writing style is so haunting, so descriptive, but not in a flowery descriptive way. I, I know when I read books, I will skip over the parts that are overly descriptive and detailed because I want to get to the meat and potatoes of what it's talking about. Her writing is great. So favorite movie is Die Hard. I love that movie. It is unequivocally the best action movie. It is so well done. Bruce Willis is incredible in it. He is why we named our dog Bruce. Our dog's full name is Bruce Willis. I love that movie. I don't even remember what my favorite movie was before I saw that. It is just such a good movie. So well done. Every character in it is played beautifully. Such a good movie. Um, and if you haven't seen it before, please, please, please watch it. It's so great. There are these shadows from JD Glow, which is a black owned business. They're so pigmented and so here, I'll show you. My eyeshadow that I'm using is a Pat McGrath. It's a bigger black owned business. This is a smaller one. This is the JD Glow shadow it's so pretty this one's kind of similar from pat mcgrath it's a little bit darker maybe i should use these together but this one's the pat mcgrath one and aren't they so pretty uh favorite smell has to be anything vanilla i don't wear perfume really so much anymore I used to wear it quite often i really like vanilla smells that are a little bit musky but not too musky because it can definitely become overpowering any of the vanilla candles from yankee candle oh my god Vanilla cupcake, vanilla buttercream, like any of that. Love it. Favorite color. It really depends on my mood. Whoa. You see that? I just put it in the middle. Wow, wow, wow. And people sleep on JD Glow. This is so pretty. Oh, favorite color. I was talking about color. I don't know. It depends. I get drawn to a color depending on what the item is. So if it's vintage glassware, any color of the rainbow, especially the 60s, rusty, oranges, marigold yellow, olive green obviously a lot of people hated this olive green behind me the 60s colors and then i also know what the best way to describe them but like the rich gemstone-y colors like the walls in our living room are called sparkling emerald our guest bedroom is a really kind of sapphire blue color we're definitely a fan of color in this house especially the longer we've lived here the more we've leaned into it and just really gone for it somebody asked what my favorite color to wear is i really like grays especially in sweat shirts i really gravitate towards grays with clothing it's i feel like i'm pretty safe i usually like to have my makeup be the standout but i should change that i should incorporate more color into my wardrobe favorite sport so i played so i played soccer through elementary middle school and high school i was on for a short time on my indoor soccer team with the tattoo shop that I used to get all my work done at. Um, I haven't been tattooed in a long time and part of that has to do with I was diagnosed with a chronic illness which makes it very difficult to get tattooed. It's a, never really talked about it, but it's called chronic idiopathic urticaria. So basically what it is is like rashes unexplainably. That's what idiopathic means, like no cause. Even though there's no cause, like there's no cause of why it showed up in my life a couple of years ago. It was just a nice surprise. I know my triggers and I know what makes them flare and ta getting tattooed is one of those things. So I kind of stopped getting tattooed, which I do miss it. I think about getting tattooed all the time, but then now with COVID, it's not a good idea. Man, there's so many tangents in this video. Wow. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Favorite musician or favorite music? So my ultimate favorite musician that I will always love in my heart and soul is Beyonce. She's incredible. She is amazing. I mean, every not everybody. A lot of people don't like Beyonce. A lot of people have been really mean to me when when I like tell them that my favorite musician is Beyonce. People have some weird hate.
for her and I don't know why. I should pull up my Spotify because I've really broadened my horizons when it comes to music. I used to just listen to Beyonce. I get stuck on albums where I'll listen to one album over and over and over and over again. Um, I still do that, but now I'm more open-minded, I guess, when it comes to music. Like when I was in high school, oh my gosh, so maybe I should go into that. I think that's interesting. In high school, I was so, I should re-listen to it because it's so good, but Arctic Mon monkeys they were my for a long time so good what else at that time regina specter loved her sia her early like super super quirky stuff not the stuff that she's making now at all like it was very very different back then i loved amy winehouse i still love amy winehouse rest in peace she would have been what adele ended up becoming easily had the vocal range unfortunately her life was cut short. I think those were my main Oh no. I went through a phase where I liked the use. It's not reflective of my music choice during that time. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> so that was high school. And then in college, I got so into Beyonce. Oh my gosh. That's like all I listened to. Now I still love Beyonce. Every album she's put out, I've just loved. I also loved when I was little, elementary school. I loved Destiny's Child. And I also loved S Club 7. Those were like my two favorite. And Backstreet Boys. So around college to now, um, Lady Gaga. Uh, especially her Joanne album in Chromatica. Loved both of those. Noah got me into The Weeknd recently, like this year. Lizzo, so the last two years, she really blew up, I think, the last two or three years. Harry Styles, his work that he's done by himself, I really like. His music is like summertime music for me. I have a playlist of songs from Euphoria that I really like. I got big into Queen. For a long time, I felt like I didn't like that type of music. And then Noah is big, big, big into music. Oh my gosh. He loves music and he has the most knowledge out of music out of anybody. His mom's side of the family, we used to play games all the time. In college when we'd go for, do our laundry for a day, we would stay for dinner. The kids weren't really grown grown yet, so some of them were still at the house and like they would come over and we would play games and one of the games was Cranium. I love Cranium. Cranium's my favorite game. My favorite, uh, kind of like board game is Cranium and then my favorite video game is Overwatch. That's my favorite game. I play as D.Va. In Cranium, there is a, a whole music one where you hum songs or whistle songs in Cranium and Noah was always the best. I'm guessing he's so, so good with music. What else? Am I missing anybody? Selectively Kanye stuff in the last couple of years. I have a playlist of like all the Kanye songs that I like. There's other random people that I listen to, but it's not as much as the other ones. I like Miley Cyrus's new album that she put out, Chloe and Hallie. They put out, I think this is their first solo album this year and it's really, really good. I go back and forth with Ariana Grande. Like some of her stuff I like, some of her stuff I don't. Same with Taylor Swift. Also, super recently, I think her name is Kelani. I found her music. Just went through like her top songs on Spotify that I really liked. Yeah, I feel like that's it. I feel like everybody else I listen to a little bit. Beyonce and Lady Gaga. I think are my two favorite artists. I am done with my makeup, but those are all my getting to know me questions and about me questions. I think there are definitely some things that I've missed or some things that I haven't touched on. You guys know I like to put my little, well, you guys might not know because you might be new, but I like to put little like captions on the bottom of my videos. That takes me a lot of time to edit, you guys. This is the finished makeup. So recently I've been really into doing the like spotlight eyes. So I'll do like darker and darker and on the inside I'll be bright. The two shadows I use with that are very similar. So you might not be able to tell as much, but this is it. I'm done. I wonder if I should redo the intro now that I have my makeup on. I feel like that might be a good idea. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that right now. Please subscribe to my channel if you would like to. I would love to have you here. I think at this point in filming, I think I have, I have 35 subscribers. So I would really love for you to subscribe if you would like and to hit the bell so you get notified when my videos are uploaded. Oh, I also made an Instagram. It's mvlogs underscore from underscore YouTube. There you go. So this is my Instagram. I'm posting to that as often as I can. And I'm also notifying you guys with new videos that way. But yeah, I hope that you guys like this video. Let me know if there's any additional 
additional questions you want me to answer or if there's anything that you want me to clarify more um even thinking about it now there's some questions that i'm like oh i wish i would have like talked a little bit more about but i didn't so i'd be happy to do a more detailed q a if you guys have specific questions for me i'd love to answer it sitting down like this feels a lot more personal and a lot more intimate than my other videos where i'm just jabber jawing while i'm doing a vlog or cooking or doing my makeup casually but i think this was good for us thank you for watching and i hope you guys are happy and healthy it is january 1st 2021 as i'm filming this right now so i hope you guys have a good new year and i hope that things improve for us <laughs> we'll see what happens i never know like the best way to end this so i'm my camera's going to die so i might end it for me bye guys thank you for being here i appreciate you